Hello again, Toyota fans. So one rule that I like to follow when I'm collecting these cars is to not buy a glossy black car because they have so many reflections, it's really hard to see what's going on. Another rule I like to always complain about and I like to follow is to not have opening panels because they tend to have ugly panel gaps. So, I love to make a fool of myself because I bought a glossy black car with moving panels. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a moron. Uh, I just contradict myself all the time. But I'd have to warn you, you might do the same if you collect a lot of these models. You know, you just slowly, after you get the models you want, you start breaking your own rules and expanding out your collection. And so that's what we're doing today. So let's take a look at this guy here. This is made by Pico. It's saying it's an MR2. It's the 3S. I think there's like four or five uh, series of this uh, second generation MR2. In this case, it's a GT2000 twin cam 16 valve twin tur twin entry turbo. I don't know if that means it's a twin turbo or just one turbo with twin entry. So I don't know. I mean, it only has 225 horsepower in that ballpark. So I, I kind of feel like it might be one turbo, but please correct me if I'm wrong. All right. What else do we have here? Pico Night Micro Turbo. I don't know what the deal is with that. Some sort of limited stuff. Here's a rear view, so that's pretty nice. And that thing. Mm, I don't know if it's a sub brand or what. So it's got pop up headlights. There's absolutely nothing on here about uh, any sort of approval by Toyota. So if that matters to you, you probably want to skip this one. And let's see here. So I learned that, uh, you know, the first MR2 came out in 1984. And uh, this is the second generation that came out in 1989, at least in Japan. <coughs> Excuse me. And I guess it was available up until the year 1999. There are various engine choices depending on what country and stuff. You could add a 2 liter up to a 2.2 liter. Most of them were normally aspirated, but the 2 liter turbo, which is in this model, I guess might have had the most horsepower. Okay, and then I guess one of the Rev3 GTS turbos was able to run the quarter mile in 13.1 seconds according to Wikipedia, beating out the NSX, the Supra, and the three Ferrari 348. Okay, so that's what I learned. Let's get back to this model. So this is kind of silly, I think. I saw this car in someone else's video review, but it wasn't in English. I think it was in, in it was from Indonesia or the Philippines, somewhere in a Southeast Asian country, I think. And and that's what convinced me to try this. It, the pop-up headlights didn't look too bad in that video, so I'm going to take a chance here. Anyways, it's got instructions if you don't know how to open a box. And so, it's kind of weird. It opens, <laughs> excuse me, it opens this way. And uh, I think it's kind of silly. I think it's not good. I mean, who wants to see a clear box with a seam in it, right? This is just a gimmick, again, it's just unnecessary. This box seems unnecessarily large. It doesn't fit with any other brand's boxes. So if you're gonna go and create a new standard, you better do that when you have a hundred different models to collect. But if you don't have a, you know, you're just creating a new standard and it's not gonna fit in with other people's collections. So that's my advice to Micro Turbo. So uh, I'm curious, I'm guessing maybe this brand is Micro Turbo and they made, they maybe had Pico make their model? Uh, I don't know. Okay, well anyway, so also this the construction of this thing is very... Uh, it's gonna break. I think if you drop this thing, it's gonna break. It's, it's just not a good design. There's a reason why cases aren't designed like this. I just don't think it's a good idea. You can also see it's already... it's got a scratch there. So that's that's not particularly good. Yeah, look at that. There's just a seam right in the middle of the door there because of this case. Alright, well, I'm going to take it off the stand because I don't see any, like, uh, antenna or uh, tow hooks that might break off easily. So let's see what if this will remove it. I think, yeah, that one screw does remove it. So look at this. There's a plastic pin that broke off. This is supposed to be part of that display case. So you can see it, it snapped off right there, so yeah, that's not a good design. Uh, maybe in this case they should have two screws. The model did feel heavy when I picked it up, but let me uh, get that case out of the way. <clears throat> it's
it's actually a pretty heavy model, considering how small it is. It's quite heavy, actually. All right, let's compare it to these photos. I just looked up, you know, an MR2 Series 3, and that's what these are the images that came up. And I will say it does actually look like these images, even, you know, the wheels, the reflectors. So not bad there. Okay, let's try this back view. All right, yeah, even though like shape inside the red lens is there, that, that does look like the photograph, so very good. All right, well, I'm pretty convinced so far, but we'll get to those headlights towards the end. Let's start with the back. So yeah, I mean, it's got these like, I can't, I'm not sure how to describe this. It's like a rounded off square or a rectangle with curved ends. Anyways, it does look like the photograph for sure. These are like thick plastic lenses and then they painted black over them. But the lenses actually have molding to them. Like this shape is molded in, inset from that outer surface. So it's, it's pretty good, I guess. Although I gotta say, maybe the paint isn't as good as it could have been. Like, I feel like it could have used more black paint down here when I'm rubbing. Hmm. Well, still, it's, I, I still think it's pretty good. Hmm. No, black paint is blocking off that. Yeah, it's just that bottom edge. If they actually applied black paint to the bottom edge of this, it would look a lot nicer. Okay. Unfortunately, there's no license plate. I would have uh, loved to have seen something that just says Toyota or MR2 or something. I, these are supposed to be the backup lights. And they... Are they... I see, they're clear. It might be hard to tell, but uh, here at this angle, you can see that they're clear. Or there's like silver paint behind this plastic lens. And so that's very realistic looking. You'll also note here, there's a really tiny grooved texture here for this little vent area for by the engine. And then the exhaust tips do have depressions right there. So very, very dimensional. Pretty deep. Very good. I don't think there's any black paint there. It's just literally the darkness of the tube. So that's very realistic. Mm. So there is an exhaust as a separate piece. If you want to modify this, you're going to have to remove this exhaust. I don't know if this, you know, I don't know if this is a hard glue or a soft glue. Hopefully it's like a soft glue and you can, you know, remove it without breaking it. The treads... They're pretty funky looking. Uh, tires didn't look like this back in this uh, generation, I don't think, but eh, it's all right. It's just a nitpick. So here, Micro Turbo 2020. Good, we know when this was made, or copyright. What scale it is, what this car is, and particularly it's the SW20. So that's great information. This stuff, I guess, doesn't matter. It's probably some internal production code. It's interesting, the box said Pico, but I don't see anywhere on here. So maybe... It's the opposite. Maybe Pico licensed this model from this company, Micro Turbo. Don't know. A lot of pinholes here. Maybe to ejector pins from the molding. This is a metal base. That would explain why it's so heavy. Okay. So yeah, see the glossy black. It's really hard to see everything clearly. Matte black is much better. But uh, another reason why I chose this is because if it, this does have horrible panel gaps up there, the black is going to do a good job hiding it. Alright, so disc brakes and red calipers, so that's pretty good. Disc brakes stay in stationary position as the wheels move. It doesn't really want to roll though. I mean it does, but not freely. A lot of friction. Okay, so a little black on the side windows there. Mm, interior, okay, there's a rear view mirror, so that's good. There's a lot of casted in details, but I don't see any additional color. Yeah, I don't see anything in the instrument gauges. Let me get out to the flashlight just to make sure. I think this is this would be my first model made by Micro Turbo, so yeah, unfortunately it's just a blank instrument cluster. That's unfortunate. It would have been nice to obviously have a decal or a tampo print there. Uh, nothing else. There's no other seat belts, nothing on the door handles. No, no additional color, sadly. So that's, I guess, eh, it's all right. It's not the greatest. Uh, it does have reflective stickers, though, here for the mirrors. They literally are reflectors, see? There you go. So that's pretty good. Let's go to the engine cover here. Whoa, is there an engine there? No. I thought for a moment these were hollow. 
but no, I think it's just the way the paint paint was laid into those grooves. <clears throat> so decent panel uh, gaps there. This wing also obviously passing air, and actually it's not very thick plastic. It's quite thin, so pretty good. Mm, the windows aren't very clear, but uh, most molded windows aren't. So I'm not gonna not gonna count that as a bad thing, I guess. It's just typical, really. The black paint, it does have some contaminants. You know, I would hope that's not paint rash on a model that's new. I think it's probably contaminants in the clear coat. Okay, running around to the front. What is this? Is this paint? Yeah, that, that side marker here is just orange paint. It's painted well though. But what is great is this marker is actually clear plastic. And there's some silver behind it, and some molded detail behind that as well. It looks like, like three little light buckets there. So this is great. I mean, a lot of other brands, a lot of more expensive brands, which is that paint right here. But no, this, these guys do it right. On top of that, it looks like these fog lights, they have a clear lens. Because clearly I'm not hitting that light bulb area. So this silver fog light or whatnot has a molded in bulb and then there's clear plastic covering it there's some rib detail here in the grill here okay here we go Toyota badge the Toyota badges all right wiper blades raised molded black black out of the window seems okay all right so well I don't know, what do you guys think? Are those really noticeable? The gaps there? I mean, yeah, they're, they're pretty big. They're clearly bigger than the, the gap here and here, right? When you go into the back, it's just a thin white line, but this is just, it is a giant line. So, all right, well, let's see if it was worth the ugliness. So there's a switch here, there's a slide switch here. It's pretty easy to move actually, so you don't need a pick or anything. Here we go, let me get the focus going here. Ah, sorry, the camera's so low, I'm always hitting it with my hand. Mm, it's not easy to actually, the nub isn't sticking out very far. Boink. Nighty night. I will say it, it does move smoothly. There's no like ratcheting effect. There's very little friction and yet it does stay up. It's very easy to move up and down. It's just that the nub doesn't stick out a great deal. You see it's barely sticking out there. You can obviously do it. It's a lot easier if you hold it upside down. So essentially if you're not holding it in front of a camera I don't think it'll be an issue. All right. So what do you, is this gimmick worth it guys? Is this something you'd be interested in seeing in other models? I know I see it in like Tomica premiums, but boy, the, the, those things look really bad with the panel gaps. Hmm. Well, I gotta say, I think I made the right choice choosing black. If this was a white car or a lighter color, I, I think those gaps would drive me crazy. But because it is black, it doesn't seem so bad. Another solution is I'm just going to display it with the lights up. Then it won't be an issue, right? With the lights up, that just looks like a normal car to me. So yeah, there. that's, that's my answer to my own contradictions. Alright, well, let's pull out the, one of these uh, spinning devices and uh, compare it to a couple other import cars. Or Well, I guess I can't say that because I don't know what country you're living in. <clears throat> Here's a Toyota Meat. Well, maybe it's not a meat, it's just a history. I know that Kyosho, I think, makes this generation, the third one, the MRS. But it's uh, it's pretty pricey on eBay, so that's why I haven't bought it. I just don't love that car enough to just to, for the prices that people are charging. I know that Hot Wheels makes this, but it's just, you know, it's a Hot Wheels. So I would love it if someone made a premium version of this. The reason why is my neighbor is a kid you know, in high school, he had one of these, 
and it was a cool car. We, we he'd drive me to school sometimes. I drive him to school sometimes. But man, this thing actually did feel like a go kart. It was the first car I rode in that felt like a go kart. So, and he drove that thing forever. It lasted a, I don't know. I would guess two hundred thousand miles easily. But it was a cool car. It wasn't fast, but it it handled really well. So. I have good memories of that car, even though it, it looks a little goofy by today's standards. I, I love it. So I'd love to see a, you know, maybe this brand do that, preferably without the pop-up plates. But <sighs> well, I gotta accept what other people like, and other people like seem to like these pop-up things or moving panels. All right, that's enough about that. Here's a Toyota made by Konami. This is an old one. It's a um, a Sports 800. I believe this is from the mid 60s so I mean it's a tiny car of course pretty good model though that Konami did there Spirit of uh, Essence here from Germany this would be the Porsche 914 this is by Kyosho as well actually it's getting closer in size the 70s I'm just focusing on the middle car so the other ones might go out of focus Here's a Mazda Miata. This one is done up by Konami, and I did a wheel swap. I put some Inno 64 wheels on this one. This is the first gen Miata. Boy, cat hair is everywhere. So it's still, the MR, MR2 is still the biggest car. Here's a fourth gen Miata. Let's see if this thing's getting up there in size. No, the 4th Gen Miata is still smaller. Interesting. Lotus Elise, 1st Gen, nope, still smaller. Alright, so let me give you a top view of these guys here, so you get an idea of these various two-seaters. Let's pull these guys out. And uh, I'll just bring up the competition here, the Supra. This one's by Tarmac Works Hobby, but I stripped off the the Blitz uh, decals there. And then I have a 348 Ferrari by Kyosho, but this is one of their earlier collections, so it's not not as good looking as a lot of the other Kyoshos. It's got some pretty chromed out wheels that never came on a Ferrari, and the rear tail lights are pretty lame looking. Yeah, but here we get into the size. So obviously the Supra is a lot bigger. The Ferrari is a lot wider. It's interesting to to know that this car actually kept actually bested these two in the quarter mile, at least uh, according to Wikipedia. Of course, as we know, Wikipedia is very often wrong, so it's questionable. All right, so that's it for the comparisons. So I'd be curious, what do you guys think? I mean, is anyone going to pick this guy up? Are you going to wait for the red to come out? It's definitely going to have to come out in red. But, uh, and obviously, I think white would, would have been the original production color as well. I would, naturally, I would love to, see, love to have seen this in a metallic blue or green or some sort of lighter metallic color. But then again, it, the, the pop-up headlights might look a little bit worse if it, the lighter the color gets, so... All right, well, I guess it's okay. I mean, quality-wise, there's actually no QC problems. Um, the paint isn't 100% perfect. It's got some tiny contaminants in the, the trunk, the trunk. but uh, eh. I, I like the fact that it has the plastic lights up front. There's literally six pieces of plastic in the front end of this thing, so it's very nice. I mean, the headlights are actually pretty cool. So, like the actual lenses, we didn't actually see the details in here. I just raised them, but I think there's actually, like, light bulbs. Yeah. It looks like there's, like, a molded, molded in light bulb, just, like, uh, down here. But then it's covered with clear plastic, so I think that's pretty cool. Hmm. Okay, I'll see you guys around. Sayonara.